Hi, my name is Avery, and this is the second episode of my tutorial on how to make a video game with C++ and SDL2. So, in this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to make a window, and how to um, create the game loop, and that would include the um, our FPS in the game loop. So, the first thing I'm going to do is make it a directory. So, I'm just going to call the directory our game. Okay, and that's enough for that. Okay, so now in Atom, this is the program I showed you guys last time that I recommended. Um, so this is just what I'm using for this video. I'm going to start up our three files that we're going to be needed for right now in this directory. So I'm going to open the folder, and it's just going to be called our game. So just one second, please. Right there, okay, I guess it was an alphabetical, it was recent. Okay, so the first file, that's going to be the main CPP. So right now we're just going to, we're going to include, here, actually I'll make all three files. So the second file is going to be the game header, and the third one will be the game CPP file. So in this one, we just have to do a little bit of work. We just include the header, and then we have the main function. And in the main function, for right now, for this video, all we have to do is just declare game. So this is it. I'm going to close it now. Um, so now in this one, we're going to want to make the game class. So I need to check if it's defined. And then if it's not defined, then we're going to define it as game h. And then we're going to end the definition at the bottom. And if game h. And now that's enough for the def definitions. So now we're going to um, include our things. So right now we're going to include just IL stream and we're going to use the namespace of standard. So using namespace standard. And then we're going to want to include our SDL2 library. So if you installed SDL2 the way I showed you guys last time on Linux, it's just going to be set up right this is how the, where the library is going to be. But depending on how you install it, it might be in different locations, but that's just where the header file is going to be, and that's all you need for right now. Um, so now we just want to do class game. And so we're going to have some public functions and some private variables. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just the um, constructor and the deconstructor, and we're going to set up those. Oh, my bad. We're going to set up these two functions in this class. So we're going to want to include game.h, and then we're going to do the game, game, and the game, the, oh, and the deconstructor. So the, in this, the first thing you want to do when using SDL is initialize it. So to do that, you just initialize it like this with this function. You pass in a flag. So right now we're not using the flag, so we'll just pass in nothing. And then the next line of code, it's pretty simple. It's the simplest way for creating a window. It's going to be creating a window and the render. But the first thing we want to do is create the variables for the window and the render. So I'll just do render, and we'll just call it ren. And we'll do the same thing for the window. So it's going to be SDL window, and we'll just call it win. So now in this line, we're going to be creating the window so it's just going to be sdl create window and render and so now we're going to need a size for the window we're just going to make a small window for right now so I'm just going to set the size to be 360 and 240 and then we pass in flags we don't have any flags so I'm just passing a zero and then we're going to want to pass in our the reference to the window and a reference to the renderer so it's as simple as that. So now we want to set the name of the window. So set window title. And this is the title that appears up here, or like the top left corner of the window. And so we're going to want to pass in the window first, and then one of the title. So our first game. And that's going to be the, oh, that's going to be in the top corner of the window when it opens up. So now um, this right here is going to create our window. So right here for the deconstructor, we get to close off some stuff for SDL2. So we're going to want to destroy the render. So you just do destroy render like this. And then you pass in the render. And you do the same thing for window. So destroy, uh, destroy window. And then it's like that. And then you want to quit out of SDL. So just like how you initialize it, you do SDL quit. And then that's all we need for the deconstructor. It's as simple as that. So now we're going to be setting up our game loop. So we're going to have to make a few functions and variables for the game loop. So the first one is just going to be called the loop. And then afterwards, in the loop, there's going to be an update function. And 
there will be a render function and an input function and these will all be returning void and for today we're only going to be messing with the render function and the other episodes to come are uh, using the update and the input function um, so we're also going to set up a new few variables so while the game is running we're going to be having a variable just to let it know it's going to be called running and right now because we're not setting up the input we're going to want the window to be able to close and but we can't actually close it because the input's not going to be set up in this episode so we're just going to have it closed after a few seconds so we're just going to have a counter for that so let's call it count so now does it begin we're going to set running to true and then count to zero and then we're going to call our loop function so now down here we're going to do void game loop alright so now we're just going to want to call the render and then we want to call the input function and then we want to update the game so um, so this is or sorry we have to put it in a, a loop so while it is running I was thinking I forgot something while it's running it will just repeat these things over and over so it's just going to loop through those things. So now what we want to do for the FPS counter, we want it to make it so it's um, 60 um, frames every single second. So the first thing we're going to do is to count the seconds. So we're going to do that right here so it can know how many seconds are in each one. So we're going to be creating um, a few variables for this. So the variables are going to be as follows, and I'll go and explain what they do when we actually set up the functions to do them. So it's going to be frame count, timer FPS, and last frame. So those are the three variables that we're going to need in the private section of the game. So now, right here, back in the CPP file, in the loop function, we're going to be um, getting the last frame, and we're going to be setting it to SDL get ticks. So what SDL get ticks does, it's a SDL function that just gets how many milliseconds has been since SDL has been initialized. So now we're going to be getting the last frame and saying that's when the last frame was. And then now we want to create a stack of the static variables. So that we can create it in here, but it's only going to be used in this loop function. So we're going to just create it and we're going to call it last time. And because it, nothing. There hasn't been a frame before this. It's set to zero, so we don't need to set it to anything yet. But we're only changing it every single frame or every single second. So now we want to do if last frame is greater or equal to last time, then we actually want to do plus one thousand because we want to just make sure it's a it's a thousand or more, which in milliseconds was a second later. Um, and then so if it's been a second later then we want to change some things so now we want last time to now equal this last frame and then we also want the frame count to go to zero so the frame count is going to be every single time it has a frame it adds to the frame count and so we want it to make it so every single second it gets up to 60 so now we just, that's just a way to keep track of it so you can make sure that there's 60 every single second so now we want to just count and we'll, so that's just a way to make it so every single second we keep track of the count so, this we, can, so we can close the program sit on here so if count is greater than three running equals false so after three seconds the loop the game should end because the loop will be forced to end so now we need to set up our render function so void game render okay so in the render function I'm just going ahead and copy a few lines because I'm not going to go over how to actually draw to the window because in the next episode I'm going to be drawing that. But just for this, I'm going to be getting how to this right here that I'm going to just copying over. This is going to be a rectangle where I set the color to red. I create a rectangle that has the size of the window, and then I draw the rectangle to the render, and then and this line is the line where you actually push everything from the render to the window so this is going to draw a red line a red uh, square over the whole entire window and now this is where it actually matters we want to make sure so every single second we want to make sure there's 60 frames and then so we just we just do the math we divide it so we figure out how many frames 
are in the milliseconds, so we just delay it between each time. So it just runs the render function every single time between that. So what we want to do for that is just the first thing we want to do is the frame count. Just add it up because I said every single time it adds up one, so, so we can get 60 frame counts in every single second. And now the static, or no, sorry, um, it doesn't be static. It's just going to be an integer. Um, here, a few lines on here. So integer, and this is going to be our timer FPS, and the timer FPS is going to be equal to the SDL get ticks, um, and then, I'm sorry, it's SDL get ticks minus the last frame, so it's able to compare it since the last frame that's happened, and now we will just want to check, um, and to divide it up so it makes it so it's every 60 there's 60 frames in every single second so it's going to be if the timer FPS is greater than and that's going to be a thousand divided by 60 because that's the milliseconds and that's the second so we're trying to make it so it divides the 60 into the single second um, so every single time between that it's going to need a delay and the delay is going to be done the same way SDL has their own function for this but we're just going to want to put in same math, so it's going to be 1,000 divided by 60, and it's going to be um, minus the timer FPS. So it's as simple as that. Now this is going to make it so there's 60 frames every single second. So now um, this is pretty much all we need. We're going to debug and make sure that there's no errors, but so now we're just going to want to compile it. So let's go into our game and then on, this is what I was saying, the compile it on Linux is we're just using G++. So now asterisk is all, so we're just compiling all of the CPP files. And then we want to include the SDL2 library, so it's just going to be like this. And then we want to click enter. Okay, so there's a few errors, or there's a lot, but probably just something that's not connected. Um, no, uh, I still forbid declaration of no types. Affirmative. Okay, so right here we just need to do that right there. Um, here, let's clear that. Um, when was uh, incomplete type STL window? Okay, so right here, yeah, I forgot the asterisk. Okay, and now STL destroy. Okay, misspell destroy. All right, see it shows just small errors, and oh, that's still not right. Destroy. All right, now let's try this out. All right, sweet. Our first game. It's only last a few seconds, and then it'll should disappear. Yep. But yeah, so in the next episode, we're going to be showing you how to actually draw images to this window. So it's not, so like how I didn't explain this much down here, I'm going to show you what a rectangle is in SDL. I'll show you how to import images and how to display them and make them different sizes and just show them on the window. And if we have enough time in the next episode, I'm also going to be covering how to do fonts. But that's all for today. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Um, or, if I, or if you found this on the Reddit post, you can leave it in the Reddit post as well. Um, thank you guys, and have a great day, and see you guys next time.